The Town of Plainville. Established in 1721 at the Geographical Center of Connecticut. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our town council meeting. Tonight is Monday, March 18th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. If you'll please stand for the pledge, Councilman Nazo will lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, um, we, we do not have any presentations or public hearing this evening, so we'll go to item three minutes of the previous meeting. We have a few that we need to approve, so may I have a motion? Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve the minutes of the March 4th, 2019 regular meeting, the March 7th, 2019 public hearing, the March 11th, 12th, and 13th, 2019 special meetings. Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Announcements and reports. Does anybody have any announcements or reports to make tonight? Oh, Madam Chair? Yes. Last week, uh, last week I attended the uh, Conservation Commission, to which I'm the liaison, and just a couple of quick things. They're planning for their Earth Day uh, recognition and activities. A number of ideas are, are being looked at. Uh, May 4th is the Quinnipiac River cleanup. Uh, June 2nd is going to be a hike uh, during Connecticut Trails weekend. And they'll also be at the Family Fest on May 11th. And then last Thursday, I also attended the Committee on Aging. Uh, a few highlights from that meeting. Uh, they're planning for the April 16th wrap-up celebration for the Betty Bocas Month of Service. Working on several grants, including the one for the Dial-A-Ride vehicle that we uh, talked about last week. And uh, the repainting of several rooms at the center is, is, is in progress, and it's looking, looking quite good. And then last Wednesday, and I think we may have mentioned this during uh, one of the budget meetings um, last week, I uh, attended, uh, along with uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. yes. uh, the community partners' yes. uh, breakfast from the, at the school district. You know, a yep. lot of gr great information uh, on the ways in which the schools are working with different businesses and groups within the community. That's it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to report? Just to segue off of um, Councilwoman's report, I did attend the breakfast at the high school with um, several other folks from town. And I'll tell you, they, um, the school does an amazing job with an outreach to the local business community. These businesses are very um, instrumental in providing um, leadership support to students. They, they provide tutoring to students, um, businesses provide financial support, and as time goes on, the list is growing where the connection between the schools and our, our business community is certainly developing into something that's very important and it's becoming a very, um, very I think, a very necessary uh, program that they should continue. Children also are able to do some school work study type programs where they'll partner with an employer an employer who's in the local community and the students can leave and get some actual hands-on experience working in in various um, businesses at the local community so it was a very good program it was very well attended and um, i think they're doing a great job with that and i'm sure they'll continue to do so all right if there are no other announcements tonight uh, we'll move on to appointments and resignations. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to appoint David Albert of 56 Hollyberry Lane to the Board of Assessment Appeals for the term ending October 1st, 2024. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to appoint Michael Burbage as a regular member of the Plainville Fire Department. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Do we have any other appointments or reappointments tonight? That's not on the agenda. 
Okay, moving right along here. Thank you. Um, Board of Education liaison, Mrs. Hardy, do you have something for us tonight? I do. Good evening, Deb Hardy, 17 Maria Road. Um, I have a few things that have been going on. Um, during the month of March, we had Board, of, um, board Member Appreciation Month. We are presented with hand school-made items from all of the five schools, which is very nice. You never know what you're going to receive from them, but everything is well appreciated, and we thank them. Um, town Council, I believe, is still in discussion with our budget, so we're waiting on that. Uh, during our Board of Ed budget meeting, we honored an everyday hero, which was Lynn Davis, for doing an outstanding job for all of the um, volunteer work that she does. We're very appreciative of her. Um, the board members have had a policy subcommittee. We're revisiting all of our policies and making sure everything is in order. We also have um, regionalization, which is a work in progress, still going on. Uh, lots lots of talk about that. I'm not very happy about that myself, but that's my own opinion. Um, we're down to the Wheeler Projects, which continues to go well. The parking lot, which will be ripped up on the last day of the school and will be completed before the start of the school year. And as of September 2019, the new K2 Playscape, the three um, new three through five Playscape will, and the basketball court will all be completed. And that's all I have for anybody. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Hey, can I make a motion to, we gotta add an item under new business? Sure. Um, under new business, I'd like to make item number three, bid number 2019-17, aerial platform fire apparatus and move tax refunds to number four. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you for doing that. Okay. All right. Um, we do not have a report from the town attorney, so the report of the town manager, Mr. Lee. Just have a couple of items. The first one is the 2019 road paving program. The proposed list of roads for the upcoming paving season has been developed and included with your information package for this evening's meeting. The list includes 25 streets that were last paved in the mid 80s and early 1990s, you know, 30 plus or minus years ago. The estimated cost of the paving these streets is $869,436. The amount remaining in the bond authorization is $1.07 million. Some of these monies will be used for incidental items related to the paving project. If there are no unanticipated costs associated with the listed streets, two or three additional streets may be able to get paved as well. And you'll see them on the second page. We may pick and choose, if, you know, depending upon whether there's any monies left over. We do have some incidental costs that get covered above what was listed on the first page. Over the next several months, town staff will be putting together a second five-year, $5 million road bond package for the town council, town council's consideration. And um, with the goal of having it voted on perhaps at the November election. So we'll put something together for your consideration uh, uh, as we go forward. Money. Next item I have is the fire department tower truck update. In June of last year, Plainville voters approved spending $2.1 million to purchase two fire apparatus, namely an engine pumper and the tower. Both of these purchases would replace fire trucks that are 25 to 30 years old. At the February 4th meeting, the town council authorized spending $674,670 to purchase a pumper from Bulldog Fire Apparatus for the replacement of engine two. Since then, the fire truck committee has negotiated with Bulldog Fire Apparatus for the purchase of the tower replacement uh, with the remaining funds. The amount remaining in the authorization is $1,425,330. The fire truck committee is recommending spending $1,325,300 for the purchase of the tower. And if the contract is signed before March 29th, $10,000 will be deducted from the purchase price. 
Bulldog is off- also offering further deductions if the town pays up front for the vehicle. Town staff is not recommending exercising this option. Members of the fire truck committee are here this evening to respond to questions from the town council. And there is an item under, well, now there is an item under new business uh, that would authorize the purchase of a KME Predator 102-foot rear-mounted aerial platform for the sum of $1,315,300, taking advantage of the $10,000 deduction <coughs> from Bulldog Fire Apparatus of Woodville, Massachusetts. I don't know if you have any questions for the fire truck committee. You could either be now or under new business, whatever your pleasure is. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding the um, proposed agreement to purchase the um, aerial apparatus? Um, just uh, perhaps you can explain to us why you are not recommending us doing any of those other options to purchase. I met with the finance director, Rob Buden, earlier today. We, we estimated, uh, you know, if we kept the money, how much, you know, you know we make some interest on it. Um, at a 2% interest rate, that would pretty much cover the deduction. We feel that we can make something close to that anyhow. And number two is our concern is we paid them up front. What have, you know, it's going to be a year to, to uh, build the truck. You know, certainly a lot of things can happen in between. And holding, our, holding on to our money before they get, you know, would be an incentive for them to finish in a timely fashion as well as if, if, if something unforeseen came forward with the, with the company itself. I'm not sure that they could... I mean, they could probably give us a performance bond, but collecting on a performance bond, you know, in the worst case scenario, can be a very difficult process. Mm -hmm. So, just in the best interest of protecting our, you know, for twenty five, you know, for twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars, you know, less, we'll make, you know, that money, you know, close to it anyhow. So it's really not that much of a savings, and I think the risk is too. We think the risk is too much. So the truck will be available in twenty. 20 end of 2020 uh, or 2021 well I, I don't know if they have a delivery date maybe it's too soon to ask that what what you the, I know that the fire truck committee was had met with KME uh, a week a couple of weeks ago a week or so ago and uh, I would defer to them I, I know that when we first okay. talked about it we said at least a year so uh, but maybe that has changed somewhat so. okay yeah if somebody wants to uh, let us know that is not hi chief how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. The, uh, the expected delivery, they quote about 400 days, so it's a little over a year. Um, we're hoping to get it in next year around this time. They usually quote a little further out than what it actually takes, but I would expect it to be all of a year. They've got about 75 trucks ahead of us right now. And the and the other, the pumper is that going to be delivered in about the same time frame or a little bit sooner? They did get that going sooner. And correct, we did the pre build on that truck already. That's already scheduled, um, but it'll be close to a year. So they'll come probably okay. a couple months so, apart. Okay. All right. Anybody have questions for the chief about the trucks that we're going to be doing tonight? No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank tonight. Yep. We appreciate it. Next item I have is a financial dashboard, and the dashboard was included in the meeting information package for this evening, and is posted on the town website. So with your permission, I turn over to Scott Colby to uh, give a brief review of that. And again, it's, it's it's been posted on the website. Good evening. Just going over the town expenditures, looking at the overall town budget, we're seeing uh, a 3.25% higher than our two-year average. Um, when we move on to the overtimes, right now we are running uh, higher uh, than our two-year average and over the budgeted amount in both the police overtime and the buildings and grounds snow overtime. Uh, looking at the hauler tonnages, we're running uh, 192 tons over. Um, looking at the revenues portion of the uh, budget, all revenues is coming in over our two-year average at 88.13%, while the current taxes uh, that we've received to date are 99.05%, uh, which is also over our two-year average. Uh, our estimated unassigned fund balance uh, sits at 13%. And moving on to the special funds, uh, looking at the uh, significant change here would be the Robertson Airport uh, expenditures and revenues. Uh, we did receive the revenues uh, from the state in regards to the grant, so now the airport fund balance sits at uh, 547000 And moving on to the major projects report, 
Uh, really, the only significant changes here are the phosphorus removal project, uh, which is, uh, saw um, an expenditure in the amount of $1.4 million, and the Wheeler School project, uh, which saw expenditures at about $1.1 million, uh, approved by the Capital Projects Building Committee meeting. Um, and they'll see some other expenditures uh, that'll be on the March and April uh, reports uh, for pay recs that were approved by the Capital Projects Building Committee. Um, there is a new uh, item here at the bottom. It says PHS Turf Maintenance Fund. Uh, while this isn't a major project, next month it'll be moved into the special uh, funds. Uh, this is just showing the revenue and expenditures that accumulate for a fund uh, for maintenance on the turf fields. Uh, and those uh, revenues received are from the use uh, of some of the programs and activities that take place there. Uh, other than that, that's all I have to report on for the uh, dashboard, and I'll move on to the happenings. Looking at the Senior Center on Friday, March 29th at 9.30 a.m., they'll be holding a diabetes program. Uh, this disease can badly affect the eyes, heart, brain, kidneys, and feet, just to name a few, and if left untreated, can cause early death. All of this is preventable. Learn how to combat this disease. This is being presented by Miles Everett, a nurse and certified uh, diabetes educator. On Thursday, April 4th at 10 a.m., they're having a healthy eating for weight loss. Learn how to eat healthy and be mindful of healthy eating throughout your life. And this is being presented by Tracy Luciani, a registered dietitian. And from Friday, March 15th to Monday, April 15th, they'll be holding the Betty Bocas Month of Service. Uh, for more information on this, uh, feel free to look onto the town website as well as giving a call to the Senior Center uh, to sign up. And Looking at the Historic Center, on Saturday, March 23rd at 1 p.m., they'll be having uh, an event, Plainville Women Leading the Way. This is the next program at the Plainville Historic Center, and we'll celebrate both Women's History Month and Plainville's 150th anniversary as a town. At 1 p.m. on Saturday, March 23rd, they will present the program on Plainville Women Leading the Way. It'll highlight the roles that local women have played in government, politics, and public policy from the 1800s through to the present. And looking at the <coughs> transfer station, they will be reopening for the season beginning Saturday, April 6th. The hours uh, of operation are 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays only. Plainville residents must show identification. And there is a fee for disposals, which can be found on the town's website under the public works page. And that's all I have to report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Robert and Scott. Does anybody have any questions for uh, the reports that Robert or Scott provided to us? Good job. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. All right, moving on. We're on the public comment section of the meeting during this time. We welcome the public to come and speak to the council. You'll be given three minutes to speak at, um, I guess it's going to be this microphone over here. Please state your name and address. I have one person that has signed up. Mr. Jim Cassidy, you go first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jim Cassidy, 19 Rockwell Avenue. I've been a longtime supporter for building this trail in Plainville, and most of you know that. What you don't know is before that, I was a long distance touring cyclist. Um, one summer, I left my house, biked up Route 4 to Collinsville for breakfast, left there, biked up Route 44, to Millerton, New York, just over the state line. And by dinner, I was over in Rhinebeck on the Hudson. And that next day, I picked up my bike, put it on the train, and took it to Montreal. Once I got there, I hopped off the train, took my bike to, and rode through the back roads of Quebec to this monster hill that came up the, to the border with the US. Crossed the border right alongside the first Connecticut Lake, which is the source of the Connecticut River. And the border official said, what are you doing here and where are you going? And I told him I was going to bike the river to Old Saybrook. And he said, well, I got good news for you. It's downhill all the way. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. So I'm getting a little older, and I'm thinking I'd like to bike on trails that are off-road rather than all the, ro all the roads that I've biked all these years. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have a dream. And my dream is to be able to bike from my house into the trail, into the center of town, 
and pick up the trail there and go left, go to Florida, or right, and go to Maine. And I'll be able to do that because this section of trail will become part of the East Coast Greenway, a 3,000-mile long stretch of trail, mostly off-road, that goes from Calais, Maine to Key West, Florida. So I'm here to say thanks to you for making this dream closer to reality. I'm very pleased that you, you as a council accepted and approved that preferred route through town for the, that emerged from the planning phase. I'm very encouraged by the state funds that have been granted for the design phase. It's my heartfelt hope that together we can create a really excellent trail through, through town. I'm eager to help in any way I can, and I'm here to say thanks for the opportunity to do that. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Mr. Cassidy is the only one that's, that signed up prior to the meeting, so I'll open it up. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council? Hi, my name is Steve Cole. I live on Two Kindale Lane here in town. Um, I've been a owner of a business in town for 45 years. Um, I'm an avid cyclist and I'm a commuter and I walk and what I really want to say is we need more people to come into our town through these trails. The more people we have, it's better for our business and more business will help our town. For us to keep growing, we need more people. So that's why I am supporting this trail. And whatever, you know, I, I thank you for you know, considering it and I hope we continue to do good works, but we definitely need this trail in our town. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Yes. My name is Kathleen Cole. I live on Two Condale Lane in How Plainville. Are you? <laughs> and um, I'm here to talk about the trail. And I really oh, so enjoyed you endorsing the trail. And um, I want to continue to ride my bike. I want to be able to ride right through Plainville, up to Farmington, go to Simsbury, go beyond to Massachusetts. And I would love to go to New Haven. I've already done that, but I had a start in Southington. And, you know, it was on road is just not not preferred to what I would like to do. Yeah, yeah. And also as a business owner in town, it will be bring more people in and uh, it'll make uh, Plainville a, a more bicycle friendly place. You know, and I, um, over the years I've ridden to New Britain and back because I worked in New Britain for 10 years. And um, even though, God, I used to ride over 372 uh, and the shoulder was only this big for me. Um, I petitioned the state and they did make it a bit bigger, not much. Um, but in all those years, it, New Britain was so wonderful for me because they had sorrows on the road, on lots of roads, and people just stopped their car and let me go by. And, you know, and I have to say, coming to the Plainville line, sometimes it wasn't as friendly. <laughs> and I would love to see us become more bicycle friendly. Yeah, yeah. And as a walker and a so cyclist all these years. I enjoy the trail and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Great, thanks very much. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Anybody else? Mr. Keslick. John Kislick, 65 Forest Hill Avenue. I bet none of you even missed me one bit, huh? Can you can you move that mic down a little bit so we can hear your lovely voice? You never even missed me, right? Yep. A um, couple things. Did any of you council members argue to have more money put into the town budget? To increase it, any of you? We haven't finished the deliberations on the budget yet. Okay. But do you plan on any of you arguing to increase What's presented? I, I can't, it has not happened yet, but okay. we're not done. Okay. Um, when you do finish, are you going to put everything online?
for all your expenses and the whole the whole budget like it's online now. Sorry. <laughs> Are you going to have the budget online so we can the citizens can read this? Oh, of course, it'll be online. We'll also have, have a public hearing after the council finishes its work. Right. Will you have the actual fund balance? listed too in part of that paperwork? Um, I'm not sure if that's part of the budget document. We just went over the fund balance in the report with the town manager. That's not expected to change before the town, before the, um, the budget okay, is finished. I have a question on it. Um, the fund balance in December had a fund balance of 8098000 Then in January, it went up to 3,380,000. And now for this month, it's back down to 8,098,000, which was the same as December. Maybe it's just an accounting thing, but I'd like to know what caused that to go up $300,000 and then back down. Uh, you know, it, it just, it, it baffles me that. Um, I, I, I can't tell you that right now, but I'd be happy to get it for you. Okay. The other thing I have is um, I'm working on a budget that'll be a tax taxpayer-friendly budget, and I am really surprised that this town council came up with a budget of over $2 million. I'm working on this, and I came up with a budget, and I'll present it to you at, at the, um, the hearing that we have, the next hearing for the budget. At a, probably a quarter of a mil. I mean, it, the items I see will not affect not one single town, um, town budget or, or thing for the people. It won't affect anything. These are just things that, to me, are common sense that should be cut to bring this budget down. And uh, two other things. I probably missed something, but I'm glad to see that we're going to have this fireside chat town manager back in the library. That'll be great. And then as a member of the um, 150th year anniversary committee, our group is going to be offering for sale a one troy ounce 999 fine silver commemorative coin honoring 150 years. It's going to be offered at $35 a coin and it's going to be to help raise funds for our activities. So I just wanted to let the uh, council know about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I forgot one more thing. I am 100% in opposition to that trail that's going to go on Pier Street, Broad Street. And basically, I'm in opposition to that trail through Plainville at all. Understood. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not done so? <coughs> Hi, Roberta. Roberta Loria, 18 Perrin Road. For the benefit of Carol and the town council minutes this evening, I would like to say that I oppose any trail or alignment that will be on, next to, or have an impact on any neighborhood in Plainville, especially Perrin Road where it will be inches from residents' backyards. In the past, we had talked about t town manager attending a uh, trail design committee um, meeting that was sponsored by the um, DOT from what I understand. As I recall, that was done on January 31st. And I, my question is, has there been any, any additional meetings and what can be given and said for us regarding this? I don't think there have been any other design meetings to my knowledge. I think it's important that we add this as an agenda item for town council minutes so that we don't forget and that it does get um, part of the minutes and it's important that town residents know and understand what is going on. The worst thing that'll happen is on that light item, somebody will say there's nothing to report. As done by the town attorney, I don't think it's that big of a deal. We had a few people come up here regarding the trail and what I found very disappointing and somewhat insulting is the attitude of entitlement 
And they came up here and basically said, gimme, gimme, gimme. What I haven't heard one single individual say, and based on what I'm seeing here in the audience here this evening, I only know of one individual that this is happening to, and which is going on their property. I haven't heard one of these individuals say, I have done everything to make sure it goes on my property, to make sure I can give up part of my land, to make sure I can give them an easement, to make sure I'm going to be responsible for it. Not once have I heard that. And that's wrong. If there are no rails available on this project, there should be no trails. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not done so? Anybody else? Mr. Edmund. Edmund, Joel Edmund, 63 Oliveberry Lane. No rails, no trails, and no thank you. <clears throat> I can appreciate uh, Mr. Cassidy and Mr. and Mrs. Coles. Um, well, <laughs> there's there's a lot of ways to to get on the trail, um, and and uh, they've been doing it for years. Uh, and uh, I just um, I don't I don't see where um, what they said makes that much difference. <clears throat> However, not not that Plainville's 2019 budget is lavish or extravagant overall. I am just not sure that it has been brushed with a fine tooth comb. In this day of limited resources for many, trying to live a minimum wage, Social Security, uh, hard-earned savings, or with any luck, a retirement check that buys you less and more or less as every year passes, it is over the top. <clears throat> every year, it is always one, maybe two million dollars or more on top of the previous year. State of Connecticut has the same problem, and it is a huge problem. Our federal government is even worse. It seems as though very few people worry about it. Um, just, just put it on the card. Nobody but the bank gets anything from the interest we pay on our debt. With the grand list barely increasing, it is time to show more restraint in spending, meaning raises, benefits, projects, for instance, the rails, the trails, but no rails gap. <clears throat> you don't need to be a professional bean counter to foresee the ridiculous endeavor to become a line item down the road, or trail if you prefer. Connecticut Fast Track so far seems to be another boondoggle. Huge buses transporting very few people through town until midnight. I take special notice. Many times there are two buses, like following each other, and both totally empty. What a waste. Question, has a trail portion to New Britain Fast Track been approved by the town, town, Plainville Town Council? Um, no. That, I don't believe that's part of our approval. Why would we it approved be? alignment. We approved alignment C, not to be to be further studied. Let me let me be clear about that. The town council approved of alignment C to go for engineering for further study. The final design has not been approved yet. The the New Britain piece of it is not under the um, oversight of Plainville. Is that correct? Okay. Okay, well, what a waste. Um, um, can you wrap up? I'll give you a few more seconds, Mr. Edwin, because I spoke in time. This would be a great time. time. I just have this. Okay. Uh, this would be a great time to show some restraint on an, an un unnecessary project that at some future time could proceed uh, westwardly to the city of Bristol. 
It seems everyone except some socialists want to keep spending more taxpayer money on unnecessary projects and considering ways like tolls, for instance, to increase rather than decrease state spending. Folks, please make uh, your voices heard and get out to vote. The trail through Plainville should have been a public question in a past referendum. My guess is that it would have been rejected. No rail, no trail, and no thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak to the council that has not done so? <coughs> anyone else? Mr. Spencer? Uh, yes, uh, uh, just a, a question first. It's can you come up to the microphone so we can hear you? Hearing and public comments. Are we eliminating one of those tonight? We didn't have a public hearing tonight. Public We're under public comments now. The part that's usually towards the end of the meeting. That's where we are. Okay. Um, last year we had a really... Name an address, please. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, David Spencer, 127 Milford Street Extension. Mm -hmm. um, last year we had a rather pathetic turnout... Uh, on the budget vote, I think about 5% of the actual registered voters showed up to vote, and um, the budgets were passed by about 3%. So three out of every 100 people who are registered to vote in town passed the budgets. And uh, my question is, what are you planning on doing to correct this really pathetic turnout problem how are you going to promote the um the budget vote how are you going to get more people to the polls you know i mean i'm I, i'm not asking you are you going to drive around and grab people and pull them to the polls but um as far as i know last year all you had was you posted a sign out in front of the town hall for about five or six days and and that was it are you planning on doing anything a little bit more extraordinary in order to try to get more people to the vote so we can get kind of a more honest feel of what the townspeople say and think about these budgets? Do you have an idea that we haven't done? I mean, we've put signage out. I know there's been signage posted. We film all of our work sessions. We're going to have a public hearing, which is going to be filmed. We most usually put a sign at the firehouse. I don't know if it goes out earlier than the day of the budget, but we do use the firehouse signage. It, it wasn't signage there last, last year. Well, that was one of my suggestions was to okay. put it. Let me just finish what I was going to say. Sorry. We do what, what we've always done, and we certainly make sure that we reach out to um, community organizations to get out and participate and vote for the budget, either vote for it or whatever they want to do about it, but we do, I think. What do you mean by community organizations? We reach out to schools. We reach out to organizations such as the Rotary. We reach out to all kinds of groups who would be affected by the budget to come out and exercise their right to vote. Everybody knows about it. I talked to the Chamber of Commerce about it. They're business people that are in town and certainly they have an option to come and support that budget, at least to vote on it. Well, so everybody has we do the option. Okay, well, Mr. Spencer, I'm explaining to you what we do to get the word out that there will be a vote on a townwide budget on a specific day, specific time, specific location. Okay, well, um, you do have, uh, you know, you have the sign out here. Okay. You do have the sign at the firehouse, which I, you know, it, it should be, you know, put it up for a couple of weeks anyway before and you have that electronic sign down at the high school and yep. it has been Route on 10. that and it has been on that yep. you get a, a lot of traffic coming through there and it has been on that sign every year okay good well, I'm, I'm you glad said only one that. sign which is not true all right i'll be looking for it this year i didn't see it last year we have we also put temporary signs out around town right. as well every year every year we have newspaper articles that are written there's press releases that are put out it's put on Plainville Talks, it's put on social media, it's on the town website. Uh, it's, it's, it's in multiple different venues every year. But yet you say it's only in front of the town hall. 
Well, I mean, I, I just see how you promoted the um, the uh, Wheeler School, where you saw signs did all this. over the place. That I was mean, done by volunteers. <sighs> yeah, well. It was. It was done by volunteers. Oh, okay. It was done by volunteers. So, you know, some of them were actually lying to voters. They were done by citizens. Yeah. Who uh, took it upon themselves to publicize that. I think they're using, like, PTA money to make those signs. That's fun. That's their own money. That's their own money that parents have contributed to the school system. Okay. So it's not town money that, that well, I understand that. it's not town money. So but I'm I mean, not sure what your point is. Okay, well, so I, I Mr. Think Spencer. We, you know, um, most people give to the PTA think it's for field trips and not signs to promote <laughs> budgets. I mean, there were people at the Family Fun Fest telling, telling citizens that, we're going to get $14.3 million of free money. I had to talk several people out of that just because they were lied to. I mean, that's another thing. I just, I don't know if advertisements can be taken out on the front page of maybe the Observer and the, the Citizen. Um, I don't, you know, when you give it to the Rotary Club, I don't know what they do with it. Do they just promote it or, or what? As I said, but I just um, say five percent is not good. As I said, um, local organizations are made very much aware of the budget process and when the budget vote is taken. And the schools certainly participate, and we hope all the organizations in Plainville participate because it reflects everybody that pays taxes in this town is responsible for voting, either yes or no. It, it, you know, so it is available. We put it on. It's on Nutmeg TV tonight. Yeah, we've had, just, we've, we've um, filmed all of our budget work sessions, and we will continue to do so until we're finished. We're going to have a public hearing. This is publicity, and it has been covered in the local weekly publications, as in addition to the daily publications, because I've seen the articles. So I believe we do a very good job publicizing it. Whether people choose to participate or not is a personal choice, but we do everything we can to make sure people are aware of it. Okay, um, well, with, with the Wheeler School, all, for a short period of time, it also came up on the, uh, the library website where, where it was piece of promoted a yes vote. Maybe we don't have to promote a yes or no vote, but maybe we can also incorporate it on the... Uh, you know, one of the little blocks on the um, okay. library website we'll, we'll to hey, maybe yeah. have a vote there. Maybe it'll remind people to come out. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not done so? Anybody else? I'm going to close it. Dale? Gail Black for CNC Avenue, Plainville. Uh, first, I'm just going to say to Mr. Spencer, the week before the uh, voting, he should take a poster board and stand at the corner of 372 and Route 10 saying, vote for your budget, if he wants to do that. I did that in Hartford when I was voting, when I wanted a bill not to get passed. I stood out with my board, and right in front of the Capitol, I did this. So... Nobody's going to stop him, I don't think. I don't know if there's a law against it here, but that's just a su another suggestion if he wants something. Anyhow, um, you know you can always put me down for the trail. And that little street that everybody doesn't want us to dr ride through, well, you're going to have to block that off because I take, I take that as a shortcut every single time I can when I'm going from... Plainville to Unionville. I can't, I can't remember. It's where the funer new funeral parlor is. What's that little street? Pear Street? Yeah. I take that one. And yep, yep. And I wave to the little signs that say no trail. And, um, you know, I'm sorry. I think I'd, I've been doing it for as long as I've been here. So that trail, that's there. So, But um, I would never ride on somebody's property. I want to make that clear. I'm not going to ride on somebody's property. So I don't think that has to be done. I also think if it seems like the people who need exercise are the ones protesting. That's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Yes, sir.
Dave Albert, uh, 56 Hollyberry Lane, and um, I wasn't really going to speak, but I wanted to thank the town council first for um, putting me on the board, and Mr. Lee, um, hopefully I'll, um, I won't let you down. Um, I'm going to bring up Norton Park again. Um, Mr. Cassidy, with his, um, you know, dream of driving from Maine to Florida, um, I've called it an I-84 for bikes, and, and it really is. I, I, I don't think it should go through Norton Park. I honestly don't. Um, the effect on playable people is minimal. Um, that park is the greatest asset this town has. I, I really don't know why you wouldn't, wouldn't mess with that. Um, I, I think um, the rest of that greenway, I don't think there's one park in the entire um, place from, from New Haven to, um, you know, uh, Massachusetts. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there is. Um, you know, and, and as, as far as the park, uh, the trail goes, um, I've used the I've used the trail. The question has always been, is it worth the price of ruining some of these people's backyards and, and Pier Street um, for for the good that it's going to create? Um, I mean, it, as, as far as the business goes, I, I mean, we had someone from um, someone here before say the the only business that it goes by is the funeral home. So um, I don't think that's going to create business for them, but. Um, if this thing could go through the center of, of Plainville somehow, I mean, that, that would be great. Um, but again, um, I don't think this should go through Norton Park. Um, I'm not pro or against the path. I, 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 I think that it, um, this is really, really hitting some of these people's properties. And, and you know, you have to decide whether or not it's worth the... Um, the price of that happening so um and and the choice the joel edmund had said something about a referendum um i think that might be a good idea because i mean people's pe people say um you know well we got millions of emails that say pro and we've got i have other people that tell me this thing i, I don't want it through town so i have no idea i really don't if people want this or don't want this um would there be a cost to a referendum if you tacked it on in November? No. No idea. I'm sorry, say that again. I didn't I'm just hear wondering, what, would it cost the town anything to put a referendum? Would it cost the town to do a referendum? Yeah. Yes. There's always a cost to doing a referendum. Yes. Okay. Okay, all right, that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council who has not done so? Pete? Pete Salomon, 176 Redstone Hill. First, I'd like to thank the council. A year ago, most of you toured Alignment C. Sometimes part of that was walking in the snow. Other times we were in a bus. But I appreciate the fact that you cared enough to look and see exactly where Alignment C went. I am a very active cyclist, mostly a road cyclist but I am concerned that we have trails for other people, particularly people who do not want to be on the road, to go through Plainville. I have probably walked or ridden 90% of all the alternative alignments that we had. When Alignment C was proposed, you were in favor of it, I was in favor of it too. I have to say, good job. I am pleased. My backyard is approximately mile 27.7 from Long Wharf. It is on the Farmington Canal. You have accepted Alignment C and put the trail in my backyard. I am here to say I don't want you to move it 
from right across from my backyard. It's going to be 20 feet away. If you do anything, move it into my backyard. <laughs> do not let DOT or a design company take it out. I want it right there. I want access for that trail because now and then my grandkids are around. I want them to be safe. They're too young to really be on the roads. When I was a kid, I walked on a lineman C and I made it to Norton Park. That's how I got to the park. I would like my grandchildren and the kids in the neighborhood to be able to have a safe way to get to Norton Park. I, as you know, am 100% behind the trail. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Anybody else? Joanne? Joanne? Joanne Edmond, 166 West Main Street. Oh, I strongly oppose alignment C of the trail and any other alignment that would impact people's backyards, front yards, traffic, and generally speaking, just being a darn nuisance to this town. We don't need it. And it, 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 people at, at, on Peron Road don't need it in their backyards. Pier Street doesn't need it in their front yards. People looking in, at, at, I mean, every house there is very close to the road. We don't need it on Broad Street, and we don't need it on Hemingway Street, and we don't need it in the park. And it's just a big, big nonsense, nonsense, nonsensical nuisance. So with that said, people say that, with that said, um, I'd like to go on to um, the budget. And again, I'd like to see you whittle it down. I know you work hard at trying to disseminate our money you have to remember, it's our money. We uh, provide the fuel that makes the machinery run, right? It's our money, just like the state is our money. The feds, that's our money, too. And we're not that happy with the way it's being spent. Actually, there's a lot of wastefulness. There's some things definitely that are needed. You got to support the fire company. You got to support the police. You got to have schools. I understand that. But look at what the schools get. They get 62% of the pie. They get their state of the art schools. And they get the, as I said before, they get everything. So um, where the wastefulness comes in, we, we've had a lot of it in this town. First of all, you should never, ever have torn down Linden Street School. And I'm rubbing your noses in it because that was a terrible thing to do. We could have sold that building, and that, that could have been retirement living, but you didn't want to do it. You had a developer come here to this town. He was treated rudely, and he went on his way because... Nobody wanted to sell it to him. This town wanted to tear it down to the tune of $3 million. There was another wasteful thing that you did that you approved. You, you did it, you guys, or a few different ones. You didn't need to put in an artificial turf, crumb rubber crap field over at the high school. And you know what? It's coming Joanne, right around you now to bite you comments? right in the behind because yep. there is there's a, a several bills that are being presented to the legislative body in Hartford that will hopefully put a moratorium <clears throat> on the artificial turf fields. In other words, no more. Okay. 
Uh, and, your time has run out, Joanne. Okay, but I have one if you more. You could wrap thing. up, please. We had we had a superintendent for this, this these schools, and I came across a very interesting article. Old Daddy Longlegs can up you, there can in you the send regional it to us? Uh, district is promoting a, a saving Main Street School up in Plymouth. I think that's the name of it, Main Street School. So he's up there saving a school, which is wonderful. But he came here and he, he begged us to tear down Old Linden. And that's okay. a shame. Shame on everybody that had a part in it. Thank you, Joanne. Does anybody else wish to speak before we close out public comment? Nicole? Nicole Palmieri, 20 Julie Road. I just want to say to everyone who has a problem with the Board of Ed budget, nobody came to any of our work sessions. You have no idea where we started and where we ended up and how we got there. So next year, I would uh, encourage everyone to come to those sessions so that you can be fully informed before you come here and comment on the budget. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council that has not done so? Last chance, anybody else? I will close the public comment section and move on. We have no old business, so we're into our new business items. Uh, item number one, may I have a motion? That, <coughs> Madam Chair, motion to, sorry, motion to establish a public hearing on Monday, April 8th, 2019, or Tuesday, April 9th, 2019, at 7 o'clock in the Municipal, Municipal Center to hear public comment regarding the Town Council's <laughs> fiscal proposed 2020 fiscal year 2020 proposed budget second i have a motion in a second is there any discussion on the motion uh madam chair yes are, are we picking one of those dates or are we having two public hearings <laughs> yeah yeah i want to make sure highlighted so well it's up to you to choose do we have to choose now or um if you got to set it, it now yeah set you, you our regular <laughs> scheduled meeting I, I don't have no the no no the it's first not. is that's the second Monday after the second week. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm I, my my mistake. Right. Um, so you could even have it on the Monday or the Tuesday. Everybody, the eighth or the ninth. The eighth. Is fine. And either I one. For a Monday. Monday yeah, Monday. 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 Go for Monday. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, let's whittle it down to Monday. So I want to leave that up to you rather than pick one for you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll well, revise next my year, motion. next year we'll just give you one. I'll revise the motion, Madam okay. Chair, to establish a public <clears throat> hearing on Monday. April 8th, 2019, at 7 o'clock in the Municipal Center to hear public comment regarding the Town Council's fiscal year 2020 proposed budget. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We've already had it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number two. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to set the location of the annual town meeting for the purpose of voting on the motion on the Town Council's fiscal year 2020 proposed budget at the Plainville Firehouse on Tuesday, April 30th, 2019, for the hours of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Number Madam three. Chair. Yes. Motion to waive the bid process and award bid number 2019-17 aerial platform fire apparatus to built Bulldog Fire Apparatus, Woodville, Massachusetts, in the amount of $1,315,300. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number four. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve the tax refunds as listed on the addendum. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Lee, do we have any other discussions or items of interest this evening? I do not. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add? Madam Chair. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>